Welcome back to Nucleares. Let's get right into it. This is part two. So let's take a look. Coolant system is uh, working lovely here. Notice I haven't changed the coolant system, but you can see my secondary, uh, it's, it's stabilizing. <laughs> 71, 69. Yeah, we're actually slightly too fast here. So I'm just going to, just like that. Now, another thing that you have to keep in mind, and that's what makes this kind of challenging, other than the fact that I'm about to go flying past 360 degrees, is the fact that this condenser, the temperature of this water, is also going to dictate the temperature of the water that we're going to try to reboil to actually get energy out of itself. So if we let this get low, this has to work harder to get the same amount of steam generated. If we let this get high, again, it's going to start boiling off, and um, <laughs> we're in trouble if that happens. Yep. Now he says that, now that would actually increase efficiency lowering the condenser temperature because improving that temperature gradient between base, so the hot, between the hot and cold reservoirs, the hot one being the reactor, would just allow the system to reject heat more effectively and just improve and improve overall efficiency. And this is noticeable in when just operating different times of year uh, with the because the condenser gets its water from the circulating water system. So usually a reservoir, or could also be cooling towers. At the plant I worked at, it was a reservoir. And when it gets colder in the winter, and it, you drop a few degrees there, you will see it. I've, uh, I've seen differences of upwards of 30 or 40 megawatts electric on the generator in terms of how much efficiency improves when when it cools down. We have way too much speed here. I'm gonna click it a couple notches and I believe our reactor is more than close enough to 360. Notice our pressurizer, by the way, it's just sort of chilling. So I'm gonna come back over here. We'll go to As it 98. Should. And then one of the cool things, if you go to 98, you can go 98.2, 98.3, something like that. Just hit set and uh, that'll go ahead and uh, slow down the reaction there. We're looking at 340, which is... That is so, you just kind of plug and play for moving control rods now that's something i could get behind because it, it's still manual operation rather than having to basically drive the reactor stick shift where you hold you hold outward to uh, get the rods to move it's actually more precise control so that would actually be kind of cool to see pretty darn fast starting to get slow here so we're going to crank this up again Again, all we're trying to do is try to increase the speed here to make this big gauge get bigger, which in turn is going to cause this temperature to raise. So it's just kind of one of those sort of, you have to find kind of uh, your momentum there. You get your thing and you can start to see this start to climb right away. Yeah, pretty slow. We can actually probably kick this up to 50, build up a ton of pressure, and then we can back it back down to 46. Meanwhile, the condenser is already starting to get... Now that is one thing... Uh is you don't want to cycle some of these valves too much. Mentions going up and down. You want to be careful and kind of just ease into like a slow um, increase in the case of, you know, increasing reactor power, increasing valve position demand, or I guess speed of your pumps in this case. You want it to be nice, nice and slow and smooth because you don't want, you know, opening and closing because that can just create additional thermal stresses on your system. And again, not talking about something that would cause an imminent failure, but after operating something like this for 20, 30 years, um, it'll, you may have to replace some of these valves uh, sooner than you would have liked to. And these valves are pretty expensive. Hot. So I'm immediately going to slam this into 50%, which is going to help bring that temperature down just a little bit. Now, our reactor right now is at 351, 352. Uh, we're rising very quick. And I can already see that I have not touched my primary coolant system. Now, as you raise, um, as you raise power, um, in a pressurized water reactor, temperature does go up. So you're at almost your normal operating temperature, but we're talking the difference between about 570 and 600 degrees Fahrenheit. So not, not very much, um, at least in terms of average temperature. And that's the difference between what's known as hot zero power. So you've heated up and pressurized everything, but you haven't turned the reactor on yet. And hot full power, which is same thing, but you're at 100% power. Basically, cooling the reactor right now with my steam generator and my condenser more so than this. Now, some people are like, well, can you just set this to 100 and kind of YOLO? Uh, yeah, that's going to take 100% of the heat that it can capture off of this reactor and it's going to attempt to give us it on the other side. So it is kind of a percentage, but that that's also strange because 100% would be like fully open for a valve or a pump moving at full speed. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be relative to the reactor. That, 
because pumps aren't the thing about pumps and valves they're not designed necessarily to only be custom fit to your reactor size and shape i mean a lot of pumps and valves are used at natural gas plants because this uh, secondary steam cycle is so similar um but typically anything involving a nuclear reactor is going to involve uh, higher power levels simply just because they produce a lot more heat we go to 99 set and then we'll go ahead and set that probably even more, probably like 99.5 or something like that. Again, we don't need to produce oodles and oodles of power here. And you can already see we're exactly at optimum temperature. So we're doing all right. So right now I'm looking at this and I can see that the uh, trend is slightly upward, which is okay. We want to go take a look here and we can see the trend is still actually pretty upward here. Um, in an absolute emergency, if we need to cool this down fast, uh, one of the things we can do is we can actually slam a bunch of cold water onto it. If you slam cold water onto it, obviously it's going to bring this temperature down but it's really just a temporary solution to a bigger problem. Emergency cooling a condenser. The thing is, condensers, overheating is not really a thing because you're at saturation. So if anything, you're gonna need to, the mindset is always about pressure control and specifically about vacuum control because condensers are gonna be at a lower pressure than atmospheric. Again, back to uh, thermal efficiency, you're going to want it to be at as close to absolute zero as you possibly can. And that's usually done with either um, vacuum pumps or air or air injectors, really, really big vacuum pumps. So that's main, when you think about temperature um, um, condenser parameter controls, that's your critical parameter right there is is maintaining condenser vacuum. And so the idea of chucking a bunch of water on there no, it's about making sure your condenser vacuum pumps are in service. And if you see any drops in vacuum, well, you want to check the status of your pumps or you could have a leak somewhere. And that's that would be that's usually what you would do at, when it comes to um, a condenser type simulator scenario. It's usually going to involve condenser vacuum in some way. Whereas temperature, yeah, you look at temperature, but it's it's basically derivative of what pressure you're at because again you're at you're at saturation home that you're having and that's just because in the beginning of the game your condenser here just it's just not that good um you'll have to upgrade this a little bit later on so let's see how we maybe doing. for the game okay, purpose off, okay i can bit. understand what um, you're saying for the game you're purpose with this, uh, try to do two or three points, you intentionally uh, points, three, have three, bad equipment kind of <laughs> time to control it i uh, noticed by the way our coolant system haven't touched it because we just don't need to and of course uh, swinging over here i can see the volume of this is slowly coming down so i'm gonna give it a couple more clicks here come over here let's see what we got and we're still climbing in temperature actually we're climbing very quickly here so i'll go up to uh, 70 percent on this like i said some people just put this to 100 percent and kind of forget about it but ideally you want to try to get it relatively high so we don't we can capture more heat out of it kind of a thing all right swing back over this side check all of our gauges 358 we could probably come down 0.2 more and we'll come down and probably 99 is probably good pressurizer 163 is perfect uh we're producing right now uh 7166 kilowatts which as you can see, there's not much. 7166 kilowatts or about seven megawatts. That's that's less than 1% of a typical nuclear power plant. The emer An emergency diesel generator could conceivably get about that high. <laughs> But um, it's not unusual. That's, like, that's, that's pretty high. Really fine. Uh, people are like, well, how will we raise the power up or something like that? Well, we'll do that in a minute. And I'll show you how you can get a lot raise of power out of this thing. Raise steam flow to the turbine. Kind of a thing. Let's see, our 293. <laughs> yeah, we could actually bring that up a little tiny bit more. Swinging over to a condenser again. Remember, the condenser temperature is really important. You see how it's a 7701, 77. Again, the focus on the condenser see, it's temperature to come down is, a little bit. That's is a good baffling sign. to if me. You come over here, you can see that the volume. He hasn't mentioned uh, pressure at all. And looking at it, it says it's in, I think if you look at it real close, it says it's in bar. No, it's going to be in units like inches of mercury vacuum. And around 30 is a perfect vacuum. And that number is going to be in the 29 range. So at the the pressure is baffling to me. Here is slowly increasing, so we can actually probably take one click off of that. That usually means, of course, that when we swing over here, yeah, see how it's kind of bouncing off its ideal temperature, see its ideal pressure, and we are absolutely killing the nuclear thing right now. We have everything stable. Um, I'm not running around like a you know, chicken with his head off. We're That's producing 7125 kilowatts, which is excellent. Uh, the Another expression you'll see is the tail wagging the dog. 
And that basically means the secondary plant, things like the condenser or driving reactor power, no. Actually 425 megawatts if you're curious here. Now, a lot of people at this point say, okay, so is this kind of the big deal? Uh, what do I got to watch out for? Well, there's a couple different things that are going to happen throughout the day. Uh, this right here is a position you really don't want to be in for long. When the reactor power, when the reactor is just barely online, seven kilowatts, by the way, in real life, that's not even enough that you would that you would sink the generator at this point. You're usually around 10% power before you even have enough heat that it would enter the basically the range for your for your turbine and your generator. Now maybe he has a really small turbine generator. He has a whole bunch of little ones or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, this is this is a very weird spot to be in and a lot of it's just harder to control the secondary plant because adjustments are more coarse. So I've mentioned like a bunch of like valve positions and things like that. Um, a lot of it's based on wanting to be at 100% power. So you got barely any at all flow in your feed water compared to what it is at maximum power. So adjustments have a much bigger effect than they normally do when you're at 100% just by virtue of being at such a small power level. Again, you, you don't want to be here for long. Also, time is money. For one, what they're going to do is you're going to get a request for more electrical power. They're going to be like, um, well, we actually want this much power. And That's, that will never be a thing. Um, nuclear power plants always have right of way over the rest of the grid. They want to get you up at 100% power so you can provide base load for anything. This isn't like natural gas or like wind and solar when, you know, there are times of the day when you don't have it power. Uh -uh. Nuclear power plants, you're either at 100% power or you're shut down. You want to minimize the time you're in you're in this sort of state. And you would always like and grid operators know to give you the right of way. Like they would if you're ever in a consideration where you would like put too much power in the grid, no. They would they would tell other plants to turn off before they would ask you to lower power. There are some emergency situations where that's a thing, but Never heard of that happening. Like, uh, okay. So to produce more power, of course, um, there's a couple different things we can do. The first thing we can do is we can increase our coolant speed. Uh, if we increase the speed of our coolant, that's basically going to give us the ability to run the reactor a little bit hot, but it's not running it hot. We're basically just gonna pull up the control rods a little bit so we can go ahead and essentially extract more thermal energy out of it without raising the temperature of the reactor itself. Now, one thing about control rods, again, you'd see, and I know this is a big simplification, but this is 99.2 steps or maybe centimeters or inches or something like that. So every core design is different when you come up from an outage, but it'll tell you like what your full out position is at approximately how much reactor power, you, where the rods should be at as you're raising power. You don't really see any of this. so. 99.2, it's not like a percentage or anything. It doesn't really mean anything by itself without looking at the, uh, the nuclear design report. Well, the nice thing about that strategy, of course, is that we don't have to worry about that thing overheating. We can just basically produce more Maybe power. that's an upgrade feature. Um, the other strategy, of course, we points. can do, if we don't want to touch the actual speed or that we're pulling coolant through right now, is we can be extremely silly and we can actually run the reactor hot. Now you'll probably notice here that our peak speed of uh, being warm kind of a thing is actually pretty high. Um, we can generate a ton of heat. Let me go ahead and generate. Show I mean, you you're nowhere near close to full power. So I'm gonna go 98. Uh, no, well, you know what? Well, let's do this properly. I'm gonna go 97, uh, which is uh, really pulling those control rods out. So this is gonna create a cascading effect for us. Uh, first of all, the temperature of this is gonna spike. It's gonna start so, wait, shooting so up. So it's backwards? Which of course okay. now means that we're gonna to have to try Ignore every, for the purpose of the game, ignore what I said about the control rods, because it would, yeah, higher, a higher number is more far out, so that's, that's weird. Get rid of more of that heat, which notice, by the way, the core inlet's getting a little warm, which now means we're going to have to increase uh, the amount of coolant. See how almost immediately that coolant starts to drop? So we're going to go ahead and increase the speed here just a little bit, and again, it, watch what happens here. See? Also, it looks like, I just noticed this now, it's like just got the one steam generator in service, no, you're going to, again, well, he's still got the one loop. You're going to want to, if you had all three loops, you would operate everything in, like, direct proportion. Like, if, it, if he had three, he would split it out three ways evenly. You want an even distribution, because that will also affect an even distribution within the reactor. The idea of any commercial plant having just one loop is baffling to me.
how that's starting to come back up the other way. But now look at this, our temperature here is starting to climb again. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pop the condenser up to a uh, full speed here. Uh, we're gonna bring the reactor up to, well, we'll bring it up to probably about 400. I think that's uh, gonna be plenty for us. And now we're producing a lot more heat. Uh, that's a problem in so many ways. So that, that's pretty good there. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, neutralize this. In. It would, it's a problem if your control rod position, temperature, and steam demand are all out of whack. That would suggest you have an imbalance that's outside of design conditions. As far as how much, well, I don't know how this reactor is designed. It's a fair bit differently than how a real pressurized water reactor works. So we'll see. But again, that's all covered in nuclear design reports, um, pre-job briefings, um, even just simple operator guides. 98 real quick. That's more than enough for us. Now notice my control rods are starting to get really hot. If they get too hot, they stop working. Now notice over here that my uh, condenser, my speed here for my uh, secondary here is pretty darn high. But the other thing you can probably observe is the fact that we got a little tiny boost of power. Oh, we got an extra five mega. High temperatures, control rods stop working. Um, no, not any temperature that would still be registered on a scale on that scale anyway things would have to be quite hot probably well over a thousand degrees celsius before um you got to anything in that would make the control rod stop controlling the reactor in fact temperature gets hot it will actually start to lower reactor power because the temp the water acts as a moderator which slows down the neutrons so that they're slow enough to cause fissions in the core you raise temperature, water becomes less dense and becomes less effective as a moderator, which means more neutrons are going to escape and not cause fissions, lowering reactor power. A lot of hours basically out of it. But now we're running the risk of actually damaging our control rods right now, which is definitely not a desirable thing to do. Because if we lose our control rods, I hate to say it. Uh, you should be much more concerned about protecting the core and your operating bands rather than damaging the control rods. If you've damaged the control rods, well, you've probably already melted your fuel at that point. Basically game over for us because we can't control the reactor anymore and that's a terrible, terrible problem. You can actually control the reactor without control rods. Um, what you would do is you would activate your um, boron injection system. It's also included as part of the emergency core cooling systems as well as your ultimate backup. But you would inject boric acid, which is basically liquid control rods, and that would shut down the reactor, even if all of your control rods failed. And again, that would basically take gravity to fail in order for that to happen. But you can, done scenarios in a simulator, that you can um, safely shut down a reactor without control rods. Now, it takes longer to inject boric acid. You're not gonna do it in two seconds. It's gonna be on the order of minutes, but you can still safely shut down a nuclear reactor without control rods. So we're at 401, eh, we're starting to cool out, 403, way too hot. But maybe this one doesn't have that, fire. I don't know. Check it, 403.5, 405. 404. Okay, we're starting to stabilize there. Notice, by the way, that we did not touch our coolant amount. We just made the coolant hotter, if that makes more sense. So in doing so, of course, now we're able to produce more steam. But if you come over here now... Again, that's still weird. I talked about it in part one. You would need to... Ha I don't see why you wouldn't have your reactor coolant pump providing all of its flow, as well as your condensate pumps. Uh, you probably observe the fact that our condenser is working really, really hard right now to try to keep the temperature of everything down. And we're running with a reactor that's 408 right now, which is re... So you wouldn't see this in the condenser. Um, you wouldn't. You would see it in your steam generator temperature. But again, your condenser is it's more or less a function of the, uh, again, the function of the vacuum pressure within the condenser. If you start seeing condenser pressure tank due to reactor coolant temperature, you've got way bigger problems to be worrying about than, than the condenser. Again, focus, focus on that reactor. That is one thing that is ingrained in any operations training class. Um, and I know it's, I know I should hold some suspension of disbelief for the game, but it's hard to some, for someone who was licensed as a senior reactor operator on a pressurized water reactor. There's a, there's a lot of things here.
really, really high. We don't want to make it so that it runs away on us reactivity wise. Also notice we've got a warning immediately. Our control rods are starting to get really, 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 really hot, which is a terrible, terrible. I've never seen an notice alarm like that. trying to race away from us. So um, we're actually going to clamp this thing down even harder, which shows you just how dangerous this is to try to run it hot for that particular purpose. See how it's turning to run away a little bit on us? We're actually going to slam the reactor closed here. Uh, we don't want to take any chances on that getting away completely. Slam the reactor closed. Does that mean you're going to do a reactor trip? Because right now you're just messing with demand. Reactor trip would be a just one switch that, again, drops all control rods into the core less than two seconds. 410, notice our it's control usually rods a big are red switch. and now we're going to slam the control rods all the way to that position. So over on this side, of course, um, this guy's working pretty hard. I'm so it's 100 a reactor right trip? Now. You can see we're at uh, 7380. So backwards. And I've completely closed up the reactor, desperately trying to get the thing to cool off. Also notice our pressurizer is struggling a little bit to keep up with this, which just gives you... I know he's doing this for the purpose of illustrating potentially a flaw or possibly a scenario within the game, but I don't know. Of all the things to throw at you... I mean, there are some real scenarios that you could do, such as, you know, a loss of coolant accident, um, a, a tube to rupture in your steam generator where you have, like, reactor, where you have basically radioactive parts that enter the secondary plant. Um, a steam generator being faulted or basically means a big holes in it. Those are, those are the three main categories of scenarios, but... Not backwards running control rods and condenser temperature debacles. That's a, that's a new one for me. Idea of just how much everything you're producing right now. But look, my control rods are completely in and I barely caught it in time to actually have control of my own rods here, which is just giving- Again, you have so many control rods, no matter what you do to any other thing, you will keep the reactor shut down. Now, as far as meltdowns and fuel damages that have occurred in accidents such as Three Mile Island, that had nothing to do with the ability to keep the reactor shut down. That was about decay heat and fission products and them deliberately turning off their um, emergency cooling systems because they had a flawed mental model on what was actually happening in the reactor. But none of these occurred. Uh, um, the fuel damage at Three Mile Island did not occur due to, and the reason why I bring up Three Mile Island is Three Mile Island was a pressurized water reactor. Yeah, had nothing to do with inability to turn the reactor off. An idea of how sketchy that is. So go ahead. Even Chernobyl. Chernobyl turned, that reactor turned off when it blew to pieces and scattered chunks of reactor everywhere. The reactor is off. It was a horrific accident that caused a whole lot of contamination, many horrific deaths, and was by far the worst accident in nuclear power history, but that reactor was definitely off. Slip that off. So people say, okay, so um, obviously jacking up the power of the reactor, um, that's dangerous. If we run it that hot, it's going to be dangerous. How do we fix it? Well, the second method is just increase the speed of your coolant. So I'm going to go ahead and crank this up to, we'll go 65% here. <laughs> now that means we're now going to be pulling a ton of heat. Why you're not well, you're not at 100% is baffling to me. Off the reactor. And now, now, of course, our secondary system is going to be going, what did you just do? As you can actually watch immediately how it starts to react. So if we increase the uh, primary coolant, uh, keep in mind, we haven't touched this. We're going to have to come over here and actually fits with this. I'm actually going to try to catch it. Um, by catch it, what I'm really saying is I'm trying to catch it before it gets below like a low temperature here. So we'll do something like that. So now if we come over here, notice we're really struggling to keep up. Also, you'd never see this. The whole, you know, oh, the reactor just shut down. We're just going to start it back up. And I'll, no, that you're never going to, you would never see anything like that. After a reactor trip, you're in your emergency procedures um, about, you know, just to make sure everything's at its stable, no load temperature. And you put on the emergency brakes and you've locked it in. Now, You'd have to do a major investigation as to what went wrong. This reactor operator would be liberated from his job. And yeah, there would be a whole lot of discussions with the regulator before you would even attempt to do something like this. And with the plant's management team and all that. I know, they cut, I know they're cutting that out of a video game, but this is, <laughs> uh, this is so silly. 
with the new steam we're producing because all that heat we're generating is now being transferred into here, which is now being transferred into here. So right now, you can see right now, I'm about 70%. Um, I'm still losing. I'm losing this fight here. Let's increase that just a little bit more. And you can see we're starting to swing the other way. Uh, notice, by the way, that if I come over to my condenser, notice what's happening to my temperature in my condenser. It's going crazy. I'm at 100% right now on my condenser, and I'm barely able to stay on top of this. I look in here right now. You can see I'm just starting to get my head over water here. But look what's happening on my power generation. I'm now producing weird. five. 30 megawatts. Uh, we're producing a lot of energy right now. And now uh, you can see my reactor core is- a That's a lot considering your reactor is almost shut down. So where's it coming from? <laughs> slowly cooling off here, which is okay. So now wow. this is where a lot of people run into their first real challenge with kind of the first days, if that makes sense of the game. And that's the fact that I hate to say it, our condenser will not be able to keep up with this incredible power production we're generating right now. So they give you a so bad now condenser. So now I'm a look real fast here. I'm at uh, 2908. So we're, yeah, we're stable. We're more or less stable. I can actually come up here and uh, kick in a little more coolant off the reactor, which is, of course, going to take more of the energy out of that bring it over here and heat this up, which is going to produce more steam, which is now going to produce more power. Now, if I want my mouse right here, I expect this to start dropping. Yep, there it goes. There it goes. Told you. So we'll go ahead and now increase the flow. Now, notice kind of the baffled speeds as right to what's here. happening right very, now. Very, very high on these right now. And we're not keeping up with it. Go up to 80 here. And you can see 2863. There's a reason why every component, whether it's a secondary component or primary component, is rated for something. So the fact that this game is giving you a condenser that's clearly not rated for 100% power, which they mentioned 500-ish megawatts being generated by magic because the reactor is basically shut down at this point, at least it should be. Um, and the condenser can't keep up with what's normally a little around 50% power. No, that th this sort of thing would never happen. <laughs> 62, 61. Yeah, they were stable now. So now look at this. We're now producing almost 10,000 kilowatts. And if I want to go over here. Wait, 10,000 kilo. He's, oh, he's, he must have said 500 kilowatts because 10,000 kilowatts is a mere 10 megawatts. So you're still, so 10 megawatts, you're around 1% power. All right. So this condenser can't keep up with 1% power. we are going to need 100 condensers. We're at 575 megawatt hours. So we are absolutely oh, uh, megawatt definitely hours. producing some power here. But the problem is... That doesn't really mean anything in terms of what you're doing right now. That's basically how much energy you've produced and how much you report to uh, whoever you're billing for, uh, <laughs> which would be the transmission folks, the grid owners. So yeah, that, that doesn't mean anything in terms of what you're actually operating any more than what your odometer says in your car is relating to how fast you're going right now. Starting to have, and like I was saying earlier, is look at our condenser. We're at 87 degrees right now, and that number is getting bigger and bigger every time you look at it. Now, if I run back over here, you can see we're hovering at about 370, 380 kind of thing on the reactor core itself, even though the control rods are basically just kind of hanging out right now. At least they're not in danger of overheating. So this is where we get busted. And now, like I said, in the early part of this game, you really won't be able to run the reactor this hot very long because once this exceeds 100 degrees we're busted and i'll go ahead and demonstrate won't be able that. to run it past one percent power now if you come over here we're producing we're really producing you would think if you were to design a game like this i mean sure give if you're starting off this this is like a sim city with reactors or something start off with a tiny 10 megawatt research reactor they even have the thing that looks like it with the with the um reactor pull over there that looks like a research reactor and they even did a little pulse thing that would make so much more sense and have a pressurized water reactor be an upgrade later on that would actually fix the vast majority of the unrealistic things associated with this game that they make this just the uh the early part of the game, you start off with a research reactor, and then after you beat it, you go on to another level where you use bigger and bigger reactor. Now, if I wanted to, of course, I could crank this up to 75. I have a little bit of overhead left here, so if I wanted to kind of go up to, let's say, 80, we'll go up to 90, for example, and then I want to start pulling off even more heat from the reactor itself. Let's go to 75 here. Oh, oh boy, this is... um. This is going to be a problem for us. But uh, again, that's exactly what I'm going to demonstrate here. So we're really, really, really pulling heat off the reactor right now. And you can see, even though I kind of got ahead of it, 
I'm only barely ahead of it as far as uh, staying on top of it. But now if I look at my power production, you can see just how much raw power I'm producing. I'm 600 megawatt hours right now, which is staggering. Of course megawatt hours is not a unit of power. It's a unit of energy that you have produced. And that's, that's not that much. To give you a sense of scale, um, most units are in on reports like that that get sent off every night are on the order of gigawatt hours in a, in a nuclear plant. But then again, he's, he's just off by that many orders of magnitude with a reactor in the order of kilowatts, then yeah, a me few megawatt hours, sure. Compared that to a reactor on the order of several megawatts or about one gigawatt, then yeah, it'll be at um, gigawatt, it'll be on the order of gigawatt hours. A reactor producing one mega, one megawatt for 24 hours, that's 24 gigawatt hours. So it sounds like a lot, but it's really not, Com at least compared to a full-size commercial nuclear power plant. Of course, our reactor over here is going to continue cooling off because obviously we're pulling all that extra heat off of it. Now, again, if I come over here, look at this. See how close that is? We can't do this. This is completely unsustainable. So um, if we just run it and we let it go past this, the pressure is going to spike, the level is going to drop, and all of a sudden you're going to get a cascading effect between these two systems, and we'll have no water in the system at all, which that's not going to go well for us. That's so very, very difficult to cool off a reactor once it's uh, kind of gone critical. So is that Oh, he did not just say that. Um... <laughs> so he got critical right is in turning the reactor on, but as far as difficult to cool it off, no. That doesn't make things any diff more difficult. In fact, it actually makes it smoother because now you have a steady source of heat from creating nuclear power. So when it, as far as balancing everything, balancing what the reactor coolant system does and how heat is removed and used to generate power in the, in, in the steam generators, it actually gets simpler. I mean, it, yeah, it uses more energy, but you get a nice little feedback rhythm going um, as you raise power, and especially when you get to steady state, everything gets easier at 100% power. Saying before, what we could technically do is come over here and hit this little freight pump switch. What that's going to do is dump a bunch of cold freight water right pump. onto this, which it did perfectly there. Now, if I shut that off, look what happens to my power production. No. Dumping cold water in your condenser. Maybe the condenser is not at a vacuum or it has a relatively low vacuum that it would do much, but just the incremental change that would have in temperature is so negligible when you're that close to a perfect vacuum like you would in a real nuclear power plant. But this is a bad condenser, so maybe it's not at a vacuum that you'd need to dump cold water on it. I don't, I don't know. Now, it does, you can dump water, it's actually called pressurizer sprays, in order to lower pressure in the pressurizer. And that's one of the ways that pressure is controlled with automatic spray valves that would basically you put cold water it'll collapse the bubble a little bit and it was and it's going to lower pressure it's kind of the opposite of what the heaters do in a pressurizer to raise pressure now that you see in a pressurized water reactor but now that that's going to do so little to your condenser as as they say in state troopers you're already basically pulled over you can't be more pulled over as they say in Super troopers, you're basically pulled over, so you can't be more pulled over. It's going to start to drop off in a moment because all that cold water basically is going to reduce the temperature of the whole system. See how this is dropping really, really rapidly, which is good. It prevented it from boiling off, but that's going to affect our power production. Yeah, you're, not at, a, you're clearly not at a vacuum. We have to play where we have to run over here, give it a splash of cold water to prevent it from basically boiling over. So uh, we'd have to do that pretty much for hours, basically back and forth while continually running back here and tweaking this thing. Again, I which is already a kind of a process to tweak. This is just so you can far. see just how challenging it is in the early game to go ahead and kind of sustain the power levels we have. Also noticing the temperature starting to bleed off a little bit. That was a reaction of uh, what we had done here when we dumped all that cold water on the system. So as it stands, this really isn't sustainable for us. We can't keep this up. Now, Something some people say, if this builds up a ton of pressure, can you get rid of it? Well, it's going to boil off. But believe it or not, there is a handle all the way over here that we can actually open up oh, in an emergency there. if we have to. And we can actually vent that if it becomes a problem for us. And you can see the steam generator valve. We can slam that thing open and dump all the steam out. But guess what that means? Um, you've basically lost all your coolant. And again, if you have to do that, you're shutting down your reactor because the uh, circulating, you need to be at the circulating water 
uh, pumps, which basically pr pump coolant to the condenser, which comes from your reservoir or your cooling towers. Which, I haven't seen the circulating water pumps on this thing yet. Maybe he just hasn't gotten to that part because it might not have been relevant. But you can't run those. And basically, you're not only emergency shutting down your reactor, you are isolating main steam. Basically, you've lost the secondary loop. And you have no heat sink. You have no heat sink, you remove the heat source. And by remove the heat source, I mean you turn off your reactor. But there have been situations where you, it's, it's during an outage where you open those um, drains, those, those vacuum breakers less in case of, you know, something else gets damaged in the, sec um, in, in the secondary plant. It's, it's an accident mitigation tool. Now, when I say accident, I'm referring to basically, you know, a secondary plant accident. This thing can happen in any type of power plant, and it poses no risk to uh, nuclear safety because, again, you're turning the reactor off and it's going to be fine. But, and you also have emergency feed water to keep the reactor cooled, which operates completely independently from this secondary loop. You're not going to produce electricity with it, but you're going to maintain your heat sink even if the normal secondary loop is completely gone. So as bad as these condenser accidents that he's been talking about are for generation, they're not going to impact nuclear safety. See how it's starting to creep up again, getting towards that 100. So we're stuck. Uh, we can run this reactor like this for a while, but unless you have a buddy who's helping you out like this in co-op, you're going to have a real fun time trying to manage all this at the same time. Can't run a and reactor again, without a heat sink. the reason people love this game. So what we're going to do is or we're going to reduce the power of our reactor here. This is a much too high. And again, one of the things they do is they ask you to maintain a certain level of power. You can actually see we're more or less exactly what we're supposed to be compliance wise. And you don't actually earn any points until you've done this for 24 hours straight. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head as you're sort of experimenting with 24 this. hours in real time. This down a little bit. That's a nasty keep shift. 98.6 because, you know, why not? So hopefully this is a good introduction to the game. Um, the next people uh, thing a lot of people would ever be curious about, other than the fact I'm about to overheat the condenser again, is the fact that um, we can now upgrade and buy things. Uh, we don't really have a good amount of points to do oh, so. Oh, I'm curious how this goes. Where should I put my points? Well, let me hit tab real fast. So what you have is two different types of things you can spend your points on. You've got the machines and upgrades, which are literally uh, things where you can click here and actually upgrade your Get equipment. Getting more emergency oh, the, way, the correct thing to buy first is this one right here because it makes a massive difference in how much your condenser can tolerate. And then you have the marketplace where you can actually buy new components. Uh, we don't really have enough money wow. right now. So you can see I'm like a 10,000. And we can buy components and actually add them to our system to increase our capacity drastically if that's something that you want to do. Again, three pumps here, two pumps here, circulating pump here, more steam generators. It would amaze you how much uh, this is. <laughs> these are rookie numbers compared to what you'll have later in the game. I wish it were that simple. That would be so cool. Instead of having to go through all of your, um, you know, plan investment committee team uh, meetings and, you know, a lot of conversations, a lot of asking for money, a lot of uh, <laughs> negotiations. Uh, yeah, that would be that is one thing that would that would be nice to have. <laughs> But that's basically saying you'd have them feel like having unlimited money in real life. So there you have it. So what do I think of this game? Um, it's cool. It's very anything that gets people interested in nuclear is awesome. And again, um, I want to extend a thanks to uh, P. Uh, Gatcom. I think that's how you say it for providing the narration as far as how to play the game. Um, by the way, none of my criticism of the game was directed at you. It was just directed at the game versus reality, which I didn't expect it to um, resemble it, but I wanted to just offer some insight. I actually think the Roblox uh, realistic boiling water reactor is more realistic than this, um, but I will say a lot of the, the cons... This one definitely has you get more into the concept of balancing primary and secondary plant. Almost too much. It would actually... Operating this reactor, I can tell, would actually be harder than operating a reactor in real life in terms of just what it would take to balance things. Because there's a lot of anti-frustration features that you have in real life, such as controllers being an automatic. Having your systems actually being rated for 100% power. Yeah, imagine that. Again, I really appreciate any game that gets people curious, interested in nuclear power. I love seeing this sort of thing. So thank you so much for the recommendation on this. I'll uh, pin a comment below if you want to check out my reaction to the realistic boiling water reactor in Roblox. It's, it's also really cool. Anyways, thank you very much for watching.
I'll see you next time.